Yeah, DD's played really well. Um, both these teams have surprised me. I think it's fair to say that as like an adjective to how they've played because CDC up to this point, I think have been a little bit inconsistent at times. And then something we talked about on the first day was like, which SAG are we going to see? Are we going to see the SAG that goes 0 and 8 in DPL? Or are we going to see the SAG that takes the, the you know, the top of the group in, in some other uh, Chinese tournament with all these top teams around? So far, we've seen the best from these teams. And now it's, yeah. can they put it together and go to the playoffs, top their group when they play each other? And I, I think it's, it's, to me, very exciting. I love seeing new teams kind of have that chance to shine mm. and, and be, you know, oh, I, like, I, I think, I guarantee whoever takes this group, it's either CDC is going to win and everybody's going to be like, I can't believe Ame is back. Like, this is amazing. Or SAG is going to win and they're going to be like, is this the new wings? I can't believe it. Who are these players? This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty exciting to see regardless. One of these two guaranteed making it through the bracket. The loser's still in, but they would uh, go up in that decider match yeah. against the winner of the next series between LGD and Aster. So make sure to uh, keep watching for that later today as well. And uh, I mean, we're not seeing more of the same, but Sparking Arrow is definitely going a lot more of the current meta heroes, it has to be said. Yeah, they've gotten into the Batrider, Earthshaker, Nature's Prophet, more, you know, strict on the meta. Whereas we see, like, a Weaver here for CDC. Weaver, a hero that has been played in multiple positions, maybe not seen as much. The Mars, though, I think has been heavily contested, banned and picked. Uh, for, I think for us in every game we've covered so far, I'm not sure about yesterday for uh, MLP and John. Yeah, well, CDC, the thing is, they play a lot of Mars, and they win a lot with Mars. It's something like a 90% win rate, which is a ridiculous amount for the competitive scene, considering how even China is. And with these four, first four picks, the Shaker and the Batrider in response to the Mars, and then winding that up with the Oracle, there's no real winner there, right? Because CDC have what they're comfortable with, with the Mars coming first. Shaker's good because you're never really going to get caught out by an Arena of Blood, so you can just stay back and disrupt a lot of that damage that's done. Mm -hmm. And then Batrider can just fly out of it, so he's fine as long as he can pop the Firefly. Even if you get speared, you get speared over the top of the Arena. And then Oracle, of course, is just that basic dispel against the Batrider, but Shaker and Batrider are great in their own right. So I think it's going to be the latter half of the draft that we're really going to see who ends up the winner and i'm liking the profit to start out with they went the weaver afterwards it's pretty good i mean you're never going to be able to be in too much strife going up against this bat rider and yeah specter is another one of those heroes that just gets in on top of the earth shaker and you really can't do all that much about it yeah wanting to stop that blink initiation once he has that uh we've seen op play the earth shaker he played it really well when he had that opportunity and then we see something like a specter i think was it ame who played the uh specter in the series that we saw against yeah, the uh, first game, I think. Yeah, and it was a, a Spectre that got very involved early. Um, something like four or five kills in the first, like, two haunts or so. And it was a bit surprising, because sometimes you'll see Spectres play very reserved. Oh, you know, you guys fight. Go, come on, I'm getting a Radiance here. Like, chill. Like, you, you do your thing, I'll be there eventually. But in the case of Ame, it seemed like it was like, oh, here's a fight, I can kind of capitalize on it, I'm going to haunt, and then... Uh, you know, especially when fights were aimed towards, like, a specific lane or so. Like, they happen top, he's bottom, he comes in, he haunts, and then he starts farming top. And it was, like, very efficient mm -hmm. with how he played it. Yeah, it's something that I really see, for example, in the Southeast Asian scene with Raven. I think yeah. he's one of the, the best farmers in the world right now. Uh, he's just able to find so much space on the map. And... Even if it's not a ton of space, he forces a heavy rotation from the rest of the team so that he's actually the space creator. So you're losing out regardless if you're the enemy team. So we'll see how he chooses to build it this time around. We saw like Radiant Diffusal Blade team. into, I think it was an Abyssal as well. And well, this Void Spirit's come out again. And that's one of those heroes that does enable the Spectre. So uh, I'm liking CDEC so far, but they finally banned out that Anti-Mage. So we're not going to see God King <laughs> playing it. Yeah, he won't be on that anti-mage. They pick up the Void Spirit. Um, their control was probably a little bit lacking before that. I can see them going for like a Fortune's End into a Spear, try and set up that little bit of a combo there. Now they've got a Void Spirit, probably Yule's either first or second item, depending on when he wants to get the Ags. And then you go, you know, Yule's into the Aether Remnant Spear. You've got that little bit of control, and it will be James on the four position Weaver, which is what I thought it would be once they picked up that Void Spirit as XM will play it. And then they finish off with a Morphling for uh, SAG. 
Man, are we really going to see Morph Shaker come back? It's uh, <laughs> something that's always kind of kept in the back pocket, not quite as strong as it used to be, but uh, even before that's up and online, having a uh, Spectre to be able to morph into is great. Even just the Weaver, the Void Spirit, it's all really good targets here for uh, this Morphling. So, man, it's, uh, it's a tough one to call, I have to say. Uh, I'm probably going to give a slight favor over to Sparking Arrow, just because I feel like they were... I don't want to say, like, even more impressive, right? But they took out LGD. Uh, sorry, no, they took out Aster in slightly more convincing style than CDEC took out LGD, I would say. Yeah, uh, you know, they... Too old Aster. I would say Aster is one of those teams that usually gets ranked, like, third or fourth in the region, but still ends up, I don't know, feeling inconsistent in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know. It, it feels like, yeah, maybe they had that, that better outcome, especially against like SCCC. They really shut them down, especially that first game. Uh, that first game that went 27 minutes with what felt like a very weak draft from Aster too. So yeah, I could see SAG definitely coming in as maybe the stronger looking team, but it's not by much. No, not by much either. And it's great to see like, if you're watching throughout the day, right, we've got so many tournaments going on. You've got the EU CIS uh, version of Beyond Epic going on at the same time. We see Puppy, for example, in Secret's first games of that pick up the position 5 Nature's Prophet. And we see it here again with Red Panda playing it for Sparking Arrow. But if you look at other regions, you see it's basically never played as a 5. It's only played as a core. Um, and just to have that level of flexibility and just the slight differentiation between regions is what's got me really hyped for eventually when uh, these inter-region tournaments start to come up again because you know, I'm sure there will be a little bit of bamboozling happening in the, the drafting <laughs> stages for sure because they'll be like, oh, it's a profit. And if you're in China or Europe, they'll be like, that's probably a support. And then like, wait, it's mid? <laughs> like, what, What's going on? You know? So I think that's what creates exciting Dota and some good global rivalries as well yeah i'm almost uh excited to see potentially too like maybe that starts happening when we're seeing changes in the meta because we're looking at an update in what two weeks maybe ice rock said so it's probably only a week by now I'm, and I'm, I'm hoping at one point we start seeing those those international spots and see these teams you know what they're going to evolve with again because it definitely seems like you know, like you said, Nature's Prophet, is he the one? Is he the two? Is he the five? Like, there's a couple of heroes that come to mind with that, and I think Weaver's one of those. Queen of Pain has been one of those. Like, that's how Even far Void into Spirit. this meta. Yeah, yeah. Void Spirit's been a four, too. Like, uh, Jin Q's played that hero. He's been over mid. He's been in the offlane. Like, there's so many heroes that have just been uh, constantly evolving through this meta. Yep. And those are the heroes that you tend to see, unless they're, like just really strong like the Ursa or the Lycan or you know even the Spectre they're just picked up regardless right just because you can flex them over to so many roles you're not giving away too much information so OP All right. I'm excited to see him on the Earthshaker again he played really well mm. on that Earthshaker he did he did uh, I'm just trying to think like any specific reason why they might have gone that obviously you know, the obvious reasons you want to get him more farm you want to get him more experience but against these cdc heroes i guess the big thing for them is trying to lock down this oracle at the start of team fights because you're not going to have quite as much not necessarily escape potential on cdc but if you take away one of the easier forms of it with that false promise then suddenly that void spirit if he only has a yule scepter suddenly can't get away so easily now you got to control this oracle. How you know how many times is Victoria going to have the chance to get a save out when he hits level six? I'm interested at the fact that he's here top with Ame, but it's against Felix, so you want to be able to purge off uh, these sticky napalm stacks. Mm -hmm. Perfectly understandable. I wonder if they'll go trialing at some point if James will leave Mars to his own accord. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that you can do that flex with the Batrider as well, right? Like, you picked it up. Presumably it was going to be a 3 uh, and the Earthshaker 4 to begin with, but as soon as you see that Oracle come out afterwards, you're just like, alright, well, we're going to put a lot fewer eggs into that basket and uh, just make him a support. Suddenly your Oracle pick isn't quite as good. Still good, 
but you know it's not that draft breaking pick that you thought it might be and it's one of those things you'll see like it doesn't necessarily need to be oracle sometimes you'll see it be the legion or the abaddon and that's one of the things i like about this bat rider because even in the five position or, or a lower you know here in the four it, it seems like he can play this style that even with the dispel can play pretty aggressive if he finds the right spots you know if you get caught out you don't have that dispel a couple of stacks of sticky napalm you could get run down with the firefly or maybe a, a flame break comes in with op landing a stun things can get difficult if you're not too careful this is pretty cool as well how felix is playing the bat rider he's using it to check for vision because if you use that sticky napalm from the fog of war you don't actually give charges to the magic stick so you're able to see right do they have vision here i'm just going to cast it once no charges great no vision and also it just means that you're able to get the better end of the trades by uh using it from the darkness Ame, we'll see how he ends up in this lane right now, sitting at 7 and 1, and then over towards mid. Didi, who's on this puck, who I have like these contradictory feelings about. I, I know Jenkins did as well. Like, he's not in a good spot, but he's still a good hero. Like, it, it, it was one of those things that you, <laughs> when I said it to you, you were like, that doesn't make any sense. But I, I just, I don't know. It, it seems like puck, he, it's definitely changing my mind with the the game we saw of the puck on the first day because mm. it, it seemed very effective well yeah like it's not one of those heroes that you can just pick for for example space creation i feel like you need to pick it for that and it needs to synergize re really well with one of the heroes this uh, that game it was the vengeful spirit right you can just swap them out and get the guaranteed coil break this time you've got a bat rider as well um, you could potentially even push them back through the morphling if they're standing right at max range same thing with the nature's prophet and the sprout so we'll see what they're able to do this time and then god king over bottom against srf and james so far nice found himself just 11 and 5 but re realistically the cs for the cores so far is uh pretty even across the board not it is terrible I like SRF here into a Morphling. It's always going to be nice to be able to potentially throw up that Bulwark and block a couple of those uh, last hits onto the range creeps that God King might be trying to go for. Just like a cheeky little play. James stealing away that Hellbear. And, uh, is this Weaver... Is it going to be an Ags Weaver right away? Sometimes we'll see a 4 position Weaver even go defusal Ags, like these weird... I'm kind of a fourth core Weaver builds. Uh, well, you can see he's going into the urn, which is fine. You know, you want to be able to get active with it. Man, he's nearly hitting up into his level three. I think maybe if he got that neutral and uh, got the swarm there, he might have continued the aggression, but he's just going to stick around and uh, see what he's able to do. Maybe even rotate towards this mid lane or just contesting the runes, actually. It's going to spawn bottom. <laughs> But this is pretty bad for XM. He's in trouble. Yeah, he's got Felix and DD here, but with the rotation of James and Victoria purifying flames with the swarm on him, they'll get first blood and take out this Batrider. So again, another one of those kills that comes in via the supports. XM was in trouble, but you've got the Weaver, you have the Oracle rotating in. It does open up these lanes maybe a little bit for SAG. However, first blood in the hands of CDC, they can't be too upset oh. with that. And then mid, DD purifying flames. Oh, just a hair off from getting that kill. Yeah. And for the all-in play with that Aether Remnant as well. Not quite enough, but that would have been disastrous having just come back from well, what would have been a pretty bad situation. Got the bottle ready for the puck, so it's not going to be terrible. He's going to get this uh, bounty rune and should be okay. But uh, wouldn't want to lose more than one creep in this mid lane, you'd think. Victoria again, that Oracle. Every time I see Oracle, I'm, I'm wondering how many kills he's going to take away with that Purifying Flames. He almost gets one there on the puck. You'll see Oracle's 1-1-3 uh, with the Purifying Flames. It just does so much damage early on, and when you put that together with the Fortune's End, take away the healing aspect of it, it's deadly. Mm -hmm. Both teams, I think, they're fine with this, right? You're going to have these scary timings uh, both with the specter of course as well as this morphling you know if you let him pick up his ags 
then uh, Ag Shaker is a lot to deal with, especially against something as squishy as the Oracle. You can even burst down this Weaver nice and easily. Void Spirit as well. And it's not something like you need to just chain stun the Morphling down. I think they're going to need a Spirit Vessel as well for them as to who's going to get it. That's still yet OP? to be seen. Rooted on the TP out and now Ame. He's got himself a nice little kill there. James would come over with some pressure. Victoria here, and this is kind of what I had hinted at with the fact that I think SRF is fine here by himself bottom. Yeah, he's totally fine. Like, you got him up his early levels that he needs. He just needs to be able to shove these waves out. He's got the level 5 now, so 2 points in Spear, 2 points in God's Rebuke. So, if Wathlin comes too close, he's going to be in danger. Luckily for him, though, he's picked up that Morbid Mask, so he's just going to be able to lifesteal off these neutral camps and... He'll be fine. It's always hard observing a Morphling. I get so nervous when I watch him shift into Agi and fall to like no health. Are you just watching the health bars at the top and you're like, oh, he's going to, oh no, he's just, he's just shifting. <laughs> and then he has a salve or something and makes me feel so incredibly dumb. XM, he's sitting six here. He's actually uh, about a fourth of a level behind DD. Wonder how DD will work with this uh, dream quote. We haven't seen him yet to move. Instead, we'll see XM move and the Aether Remnant. Waning Rift, there's this dream coil onto two. Ame, like I talked about, he's coming in early to try and get a kill here. Red Panda makes the rotation. And I believe Ame, still using that haunt, went back towards top and haunted on top of uh, OP instead. He felt a little too pressured there with both Felix and Red Panda coming in. Yeah, as soon as that uh, Scarab went away as well, that was the point where he was like, look, I've got to disengage. All of that armor returns instantly as soon as it goes down. So when you don't have that additional kill potential, there's just no reason for the spec to be there. God King hit with a spear, but not much else. Now my thing is, who is going to take this uh, these couple of stacks that James has been able to create XM. for here? Ooh, in some trouble, but DD getting blown up with the help of Victoria with the purifying flames. Then up towards top on the top rune, Red Panda. He's got the swarm on him. James, he's trying to get this kill with the Shikuchi and Will. Felix also dies. That's three kills for CDC through this mid lane. All of a sudden, uh, uh, CDC they counter the aggression of SAG really well in this mid lane. Yeah, underestimating the damage that James was able to do at that point. You know, he's got the Urn of Shadows, he's had the Swarm on him for quite a while, so didn't go for the instant teleport back and died because of it. DD might be in danger here, though. Although he's been really good at being able to bait things out so far, only having died the once and still getting a good amount of levels. He needs to be a little bit more careful. We've uh, watched him get caught with that Aether Remnant, um, you know, with the Astral Step, having the, the Oracle there, who's got three levels in the Purifying Flames like that, can really put you down low in DD. And if he gets uh, a little too overzealous, might find himself dying again in this mid lane. So this is a thing that's a little bit strange with Sparking Arrow as well, right? With a Void Spirit, as soon as you hit this timing around the level seven, six, seven, eight mark, you want to be making rotations to the other lanes to try and make something happen, just because you're obviously a really strong hero at that point of the game. But uh, a lot of the Sparking Arrow heroes are just making the rotations mid and meaning that he doesn't even have to move and he's still getting a really good trade and they're getting the kills. So they're fine with it on CDC. So they hold this outpost for a moment they don't want to give up both outposts to uh, CDC, so coming in as SAG to take it right on back. I'll get one. And, uh, well, SRF, he's going to try for something sneaky here against OP, but should be able to still snare the bounty rune for himself. And he's closing in a little bit on his Black King, but actually, did he just buy something different? Okay, so he's got the power treads coming out to him instead, realizing that he might just want to be a little bit more active in these team fights coming up shortly, just because it hasn't gone their way so far. Interesting decision. Not sure how it's going to work out for them, considering they already had a death but Felix. I suppose... Jeez, he's 
close to getting caught out, but XM doesn't actually have another Astral Step. Instead, Ame's here with the Haunt, Spectral Dagger, and then he's back towards DD. He is using that Haunt, getting a kill, and out immediately, haunting somewhere else. But they're still looking. They've got OP in a bit of trouble. They're thinking about TPing in this Nature's Prophet. Echo Slam committed. There's the Waning Rift, so they've got the Silence on it, too. Dream Coil hits on both these heroes. It snaps on the Oracle, so Victoria now tries to run XM. He's trying to find a spot to go in on. He has one charge on this Astral Step. He'll get the kill on a Victoria, and now he'll make space between him and DD. Fantastic play by the Oracle there to dodge out most of the magic damage coming through. Pops the Fates Edict onto the Void Spirit, which means, well, you're going to live. And not even opting to go for the Yule Scepter to start here on XM. Just going straight into that Ags, realizing, look, we've had a pretty good start to the game. We've got the levels, we've got the team fight potential. Like, even without any items, he's just going straight for this puck. God, the damage he can do with an Astral Step into the Aether Remnant, because it kind of sets up. He gets the Astral Step off, Phase Shift, and you're just sitting there waiting for the uh, Aether Remnant to come in. Bottom, Spear hits on OP, SRF, not really much of a follow-up. OP doesn't have Echo Slam, he's used it in that bottom fight, so nothing really to do anything, even if the Nature's Prophet were to TP over. They're going for the Smoke Gang here, got really lucky with the trusty Shovel getting the Bounty Runes, so not only did you get the, uh, the bottle TP happening, but also the Bounty Rune from the Shovel, so an extra six sips available for XM, and Red Panda should be going down. Oh, no, misplay. Yeah, miss the uh, Aether Remnant. Dyer's top tower is under attack. That's unlike him. Dyer's Meanwhile, top, top God King, he's still working a good net worth. Going into the Yasha. Ame at the same time, he's going Manta. He's just about has his Yasha. And they're very close to each other. I will say the only thing is Ame's been a bit more active. God King's still sitting here, 0, zero, zero. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Eight's out a TP down bot here from Felix, so he's going to be stuck down this side of the map. He's doing a good job by making sure he stays in those trees, not revealing the fact that he just TP'd. Otherwise, they could just force some aggression either towards the mid or top sides. But they're going to have to aggress the fact that God King's pushed this top lane in all the way. It's a lot of experience going away. I know you don't have your tier 1 tower anymore, but you still got that outpost, at least until Red Panda secures it. So now it's a little bit scarier for Ame just to farm inside the CDEC jungle. You'll still see though, he's going to do it because he's got that escape potential. He's got some decent stats with the Necro Book. He's got the power treads and now the Yasha coming out to him. So he'll be able to make efficient use of uh, this space that his team's got. And they shouldn't be looking to go above the tier 1 tower all that much. A bit surprised at the pacing of this game, but... You know, it looks like... Both these teams kind of waiting on a couple things. They want the Blink Dagger on OP. I think DD, yeah, he just picked up his Blink Dagger. And then for Batrider, he's far if he is going Blink Dagger next. But I wouldn't be surprised if they still continue to play conservatively. Like they've been doing. Mm -hmm. Their catch is decent. But it, it's not exactly amazing until you've got this Blink Dagger for the Earthshaker. So if he's chasing Felix, he's got a good idea of the cooldown of that Firefly because he wouldn't have popped that if it wasn't going to, well, I was about to say guarantee a kill, but doesn't even get it. So nice little win there for SAG by essentially doing nothing. Mars going for the Blink Dagger, then the BKB. Get that initiation with the Blink into the arena. And then Echo Slam was used bottom on this Oracle. Look at a quick kill. On the Victoria and maybe look for more. SRF hides in the trees. A blind dream coil. Not sure if he had vision of where he went in. But now they've got the lasso. That'll snap the coil. They've got this combo to put out some damage on SRF. Now they just need to finish off the kill. They've got the sprout to control him some more. And finally finish him off. A very good job there from SR, uh, SAG. Good job getting the trades there. They'll still be able to secure these uh, couple of bounty runes. So XM, he's having a fine time. Again, I'm liking the fact that he's gone the Staff of Wizardry first. It means that it doesn't reveal all too much about his item progression. Now he's picked up that point booster. So if they're on point with checking him out on SAG, they'll know that that's the first item that he's got for himself. That Ag Scepter, the Silence, is going to be real handy against this puck. 
And it's pretty good for God King that he opted to go... Well, actually, he's not going the Mantis style, just the S and Y this time around. So he's not going to be able to get out of that silence. This has been God King's go-to. I think he didn't go Manta in either of the games he played Anti-Mage. He went S and Y for both. And he's doing that again here as the Morphling. And then I think both games were against Void Spirit too, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Sure were. Ame's happy with his space. Yes, he, he's going into the Manta style this time around. So he realizes the threat of coming up against this puck. He doesn't want to be in a situation where he just cannot get away. It's pretty nice. He's trusting the uh, the outplay potential that he should be able to get, even if the Bat Rider comes around on top of him. You pop that Manta style straight away, and well, not disjoints, but it confuses. You know, it makes you have to make that secondary decision about well, which one do I actually want to lasso if I want to start this fight. Radiant structures are fortified. Again, he's just playing nowhere near his team. This is exactly what he needs to do. He's got that Haunt available, level 14 and a half. He's got the all stats as well, so not going for that farm intensive build with the plus five health regen. So he's ready to join at any time. Only 300 gold away from that Manta. And he's much more willing to do so than we'll see other Spectres. Uh, it's very much Ame's style. Get in there when he can. And that's exactly what we're going to see. There's the Haunt. They've got the Kill a Red Panda already. They'll look over at OP with the Astro Step forward from XM as well as the Aether Remnant to lock him down. James will get the kill and it's a 1-2 punch from CDC as well as the Tier 1 Tower mid. Okay. Nicely done and perfect timing of being able to start to secure some of these neutral items. Grove Bow's coming out for both teams, which... I mean, they'll both be pretty happy with that. Void Spirit's a fantastic item on. Same thing with the Puck, or even just this Nature's Prophet. The Morphling, actually. It's, it's good on everyone. Clumsy Net. Man, getting a little bit lucky here. Felix might be in a bit of trouble, though. Yeah, playing this uh, a bit greedy and far from his team. SRF coming in. Does he have the Blink Dagger yet? He's actually just short of it, but he is, wow, wormed his way out of this gank. Mm -hmm. That's impressive, because he is kind of in no man's land there. Aether God, Remnant. Something on God King. And this is God King once again. He'll sidestep it. OP, though, he's ready with the Blink as well as the Echo Slam, and there it is. It's on to two, but they've used the False Promise very early in this fight. They'll look over at SRF, the Waveform forward. God King with the help of Red Panda as well as OP looking towards getting a kill onto the Mars, but the Aether Remnant this time lands, and God King won't be able to continue forward. Ame shows up. He'll pop that James Manta, Waveform in, and now James behind him. XM, he's taking a lot of damage with the Astro Step right onto OP as well as God King. They're sitting both low. There's the arena down from this Mars. They got the kill on the OP, but nothing more. Puck's in this one, who he will get the kill on the SRF. And it's just a one for one. At least James so has found the other three that are still here on Sparking Arrow. Right, might be in a bit of trouble as well. Waning Rift and the shots coming through from Red Panda. They take the life of James. Good fight there from SAG. Very spread out, and I think that really benefits SAG in a way. Mm -hmm. It's always so deceptive how much damage you can do with this swarm, especially when you've got, like, a, I don't want to say physical damage heavy lineup on Sparking Arrow, but that uh, that Mars God's Rebuke does a hell of a lot of damage. I think the Shaker was sitting on minus two armor at the end of that just because he had the Scarab debuff on him for so long, so you're not really going to survive all that long against a Mars that's got a decent amount of farm. 30 seconds until those outposts as well. So you can see here again, just running away from this uh, Arme Spectre, realizing, right, this is where we can farm. They don't have a tier one tower. And if we take this, they suddenly can't TP in easily and join the team fights. Will they look to disrupt this capture though? It doesn't look like they'll be able to. So big win for CDC. And they're not actually retaliating on it either. They're not gonna put two or three heroes there to try and take this outpost back. They'll just concede the two over to CDC, which is a bit of a surprise. I know Felix, he's got that blink dagger. He's trying to debut it, but he's already been spotted under these wards. So they have to know that he's picked it up. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, you can't just commit two or three heroes. Like, you know that there's probably a few people there. You don't make, like, a, a solo play into the Radiant Jungle to recap an outpost. It's, it's you know, 
that'd be next to suicide and maybe it's a next level play as well just to kind of commit that because it's not a logical thing to do but wisely enough spiking arrow they didn't make the play spectre could always come in and haunt and right now maybe the thing for them to do is if they have that spirit vessel yet they don't that's the big issue for them they can't just go on this spectre because you need that vessel to be able to kill it Ooh, defensive dream coil just on a position four i don't know about that one Yeah, who's going to pick this up? You can see Red Panda here. He's going for the mechanism just for a little bit of survivability for himself as well as the rest of his team. DD going aggressive. We're seeing a lot of BKBs start to come out shortly. No Axe Scepter yet for God King. Hasn't even got it queued up. Wants to finish that. Well, now he's going the Manta style after the Sanjin Yasha. Realizing the importance of that silence. And this is one of the great things about the Weaver, right? You can just shove out lanes so easily with relative safety for yourself. You know, you're not committing all that much. You've got a great escape. You've got good movement. And, you know, if you're going to rotate in a few people to try and deal with it, it's not really worth the time. It's just a pause for Weaver. Like, you, all of your net worth is being held in this spirit vessel right now. Also just lets him get that much closer towards the Ag Scepter for himself, which is going to be pretty damn handy, especially with this Spectre, if he's able to get in position to get a few casts off. Yeah, we talked about the four position Weaver potentially being a big help here with that Ags, and it can be very strong, especially you get bursted down pretty low all of a sudden, you've got yourself uh, the Ags handy, get yourself back up to full. Got this rotation come through again, the smoke's here, you've got the haunt available, having just hit level 18 as well. And this Manta style and the Diffusal Blade on the Spectre. This should be a dead OP. Not even needing to use the haunt and well, James started to make the connection. Will they even try and go for Roche here? With that swarm, it could be done relatively fast, but just not feeling that they quite have the physical damage to take him down just yet. I think the next key timing that they're waiting for in CDEC is this level 15. Ooh, Asso on coming XM. in. There's the haunt immediately. Now they go with the arena to try and get this kill. Felix is already dead. False promise out on the James. God King already on the run. And with that, Fortunes and XM is here. They've got the silence. They have themselves the Aether Remnant and oof, more fling low, but still surviving. Blink forward. Clumsy net gets avoided. And another Shikuchi. God King. By the skin of his teeth so far, but oh, great Aether Remnant! XM gets that kill under the Morphling, and that is a very important kill here for the side of CDC. Yeah, nicely done to get that engagement, even though well, they got initiated on, right? The lasso used to try and get an early pickoff, but just shows the effectiveness of having that Spirit Vessel, not able to get the maximum usage out of that Attribute Shift, and you know, perhaps the Manta Style could have been his saving grace. Not this time around. And it should be a tier 1 tower, which could also indicate that they're going to make Radiant a play around this Roche Pit right now. They've got good vision. You don't have an easy way to TP in after this uh, outpost is Radiant taken, which is where Victoria is headed right now. And, uh, I mean, two live Spectre with a Aghanim Scepter coming up relatively Radiant shortly, already halfway there on James. It's a scary prospect trying to kill this Spectre. Not once, not twice, but three times. Uh, Spectre getting into the Scotty soon. Um, are you? Hmm. What if we went from wanting a Scotty to going into the Manta? Are you surprised that he made that switch, or is it something that you support? I think it's fine. Like against a puck, you always want that that ability to just break that out. So now he's gone the Scotty. Um. I think it's fine, like, you just need more things to be able to deal with this Morphling. Like, yes, you're a Spectre, but you can't disrespect the potential of Morph. Ooh, they find Victoria, as well as the Mars Dream Coil on a both of them. They've used the Echo Slam, but do they have the damage? They look over as the False Promise is placed on SRF. They do lose Victoria. The Haunt comes in. They look for the damage on an OP. They'll take out DD. I'm getting a little bit of lag here as God King, he's low. Felix dropped. Three heroes gone, and again, they'll chase after this Morphling. They miss the Aether Remnant, but continue on forward, get the silence, and grab the kill. 
even Dagon being built up by XM here to be able to quickly burst down that Morphling perhaps before he's able to get off any sort of uh, escapes, morph into that strength. And uh, Puck as well, I mean, we saw them pop really quickly and again, I just feel like Victoria is playing this fantastically. You know, previously getting some key fates edicts off onto his teammates, that time around using it on himself before the Lasso was able to go off and that enabled him to get off the False Promise onto the Mars and that turnaround meant that no one on CDEC fell down. 6k lead, now they've got themselves the Aegis on Spectre. Gives them time to finish off this Scotty. E. Wish fulfilled. He's level Radiant 21 as well, so... Oh, and he's going to be able to get this Illusion Root. Doesn't get much better. <sighs> grabbing that kill on OPX, I'm grabbing another one. He is having himself a game. Him and Ame are yet to drop. Yeah. I mean, James has been doing pretty damn well for himself, too. I mean, it's always going to be a good They're looking position still to be Morphling. in. They did again. He's in some trouble. They've got the lasso. There's the arena as well as the spear that assimilate. And now do they have the damage to take out the Morphling with the BKB being popped by DD? They look over at Victoria. They've got the damage to take out the Oracle. But now the turnaround on a DD as well as Red Panda. The BKB is going to run out eventually here for DD. The silence onto a couple. They'll take out the Nature's Prophet. OP still dead. And down goes DD. They're just expending all of their resources, just trying to run away, essentially. And even now, the Tier 2 tower, it should fall. They're not going to want to pop the glyph just yet, I wouldn't think, because CDC are going to be in a position to start pressuring that high ground shortly. Or at least in the next three and a half minutes while they've got the remainder of this Aegis. But, uh, yeah, so close, yet so far. God dang. Dagon 3 for this Void Spirit. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I think it's the first time I've seen a Dagon on Void. I think it's a pretty good game for it, right? You want to be able to quickly burst down the puck during the silence. Same thing with this Morphling, perhaps They'll punishing it for the fact. They've got themselves the clumsy net, and another Shikuchi there is a kill. Sorry about that. No, that's all good. Uh, just, just saying punishing the Morphling for the fact that he didn't have that way to break out of the silence so far, right? So if you're able to quickly burst him and find him before he can shift towards that strength, then he's not that tanky, you know? You can be... Very, very low HP if you're aggressively farming as this Morphling, which you kind of need to do considering how the game's gone so far. But now at least he's picked it up. As long as he's not popping it prematurely, God King should be okay. God. Already into the Dagon 4. Just a quick blap of the Dagon. <laughs> it's got the Dream Coil though. On XM, do they have the control? BKB, and you will get the damage already out on the Red Panda. The Echo Swim gets committed. They've got Victoria right here to put the False Promise and keep alive this Void Spirit. Ame makes the rotation with the Haunt. So XM, he backs out. He'll get healed up by this Oracle. They'll grab the kill on OP as well as Red Panda and continue to heal him up. Now he's back to full. They've got themselves the Remnant. They'll take out God King so quickly. Whoa, and GG yeah. just like that. Yeah, I was about to say, this is getting the stage where you need to call GG. It wasn't used that fight, but uh, James had just picked up his Ag Scepter. So even if that fantastic False Promise didn't get the full heal through, uh, he would have just been converted right back up to full HP. So CDC looking pretty dominant. Good draft. And uh, yeah, I mean, perhaps just some poor itemization punishing, in the, punishing them in the end. Yeah, unfortunately, I wish I could look at the uh, post-game screen, but... Uh, I can, for whatever reason. The I Australian don't... internet isn't terrible for us. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but it happens like once a day where they call GG and as the engine explodes, my Dota crashes. Ever oh, since fantastic. Battle Pass, it's been that kind of way. But uh, did XM and uh, Ame both finish without a death? They did. Uh, 8, 0, and 9 on XM, 7, 0, and 10 on Ame. James only died once for 19 out of the 24 kills in the game. It was looking pretty damn good for him. Gosh, that is uh, very, very strong from uh, CDC. So they end up taking game one here up against SAG. We'll see if they can sweep the series, take the group, and... You know, claim it for their own. Probably something that not many people thought they would do. But uh, we'll be back with game two in just a moment. SAG against CDC. I'm a caster B Cup joined here by Denag. We'll be back in just a second. Stay right there. 